right, Shalom Mishpocha. In a couple of weeks since we've done a Facebook Live coming to you today from the birthplace of America, America's Eastern Gate on the 14th of January, 2021. Here we are in a new year, and uh, there's a swirl of activity around us. And, uh, and I'm hearing from other people, now what? Well, that's the million dollar question. Now what? And I want to address a couple of things here, but first and foremost, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag and cut right to the quick. All the white noise has to be turned off and we've got to focus on God. We've got to clearly hear his voice in this hour. It's still not 110% clear to me what's going to happen on January the 20th. I spoke uh, last week, two weeks ago at a message next, a week from tomorrow. I will apologize for one or two things for either listening to the false prophetic voice that said Trump would get another four years. And, and again, I'm not playing politics. This is a pro-Democrat or, or pro-Republican. This is just, where are we going? And, uh, and if he's not inaugurated next Wednesday, the 20th, then we have to do a complete bottom-up review. We've got to do some soul searching. We've got to fall back and pray, repent, and seek God. Because that means 99% of the prophetic voice in America is not the prophetic voice. Deuteronomy says, how do you know a prophet is true? Because what he says comes to pass. If they're, what they're saying does not come to pass, it's false prophecy. And so we have to shut it off. That's part of the white noise. If Trump somehow does get another four years and he's inaugurated, then I'm going to repent for not listening to the prophetic voice. Uh, one way or the other, we're at this crossroads. It's going one way or the other. But what's complicating this is the immense amount of white noise that's going on out there. I get extreme ends of the spectrum stuff sent to me habitually all the time. I, I, I want to pause here for a second <clears throat> because most of you know I'm, I'm a 22-year naval veteran. Uh, I was in the submarine force, but I was on the intelligence side of this in combat systems. I was an STS. I was a sonarman, and that's all we did was intel. I was stationed in D.C. I got an intel brief once a week while I was stationed there uh, for three, a little over three years. And so that's one of the things I miss. There's very few. I miss the camaraderie and the people. I don't, I don't miss the three or four days at a time of not sleeping. I don't miss being away from my family six or seven months at a time. Uh, the submarine force doesn't deploy and only in wartime. We do it habitually ever since I was in the service. So it, it's, it's common routine for us. Uh, but I miss being on the inside and knowing what's happening. And so I, I shared this in the office this morning. I'm not giving away any secrets or anything. Uh, but I was in the military when, contrary to popular belief, Al Gore did not invent the Internet. Uh, we had it in the military first called a CIPRNET before the Internet was released to the civilian community. And so my last job, uh, I was in charge of a schoolhouse, uh, the integrated uh, submarine under uh, integrated SOSIS Arrays Undersea System Surveillance Schoolhouse. That's a mouthful. Um, but it's all based upon intel. We had a top secret classroom. Uh, we had double cipher doors to get in. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I ran the school. So you know what that means. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I worked on congregational stuff. I did do some things. I did some interactions, of course. You know, we had a staff and uh, we had 12 instructors, but I wasn't on the stump. I wasn't teaching. I didn't do that stuff. I just ran the upper level metrics of the schoolhouse. But he, here's, hear me out. Uh, in, the, in our IUSS um, classroom, we had CIPRNET computers. And so this was a, a, one of the first routines I would do every morning. And now this is back in the early 2000s, uh, after 9-11, and uh, President George Bush was saber rattling for months. Weapons of mass destruction, Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction, Iraq. We kept, we're gonna do something. We're gonna, <clears throat> the CIPRNET was a secret internet for the military. I would log on every morning and the Air Force reconnaissance divisions would broadcast their satellite feeds. Now, this, this wasn't the pictures where they could count the, you know, your eyebrow hairs. Uh, this was a system where, where it was just general. You couldn't control the cameras. You could just see the overall general feed from these satellites. And I watched day after, this is my own personal experience. I'm not telling you what someone else said. I'm not telling you or sharing someone else's experience. This is my experience. I logged on to the ZipperNet. I tapped into these. They all had their own websites. I would tap, it was interesting. It was fascinating. And I'm looking at the general video feed from that satellite. And for weeks, listen to me, for weeks, 
I watched trucks, convoys, trucks, convoys. The whole time this nation is saber rattling, saying weapons of mass destruction, we're coming. Truck, convoys, trucks leave Iraq and cross the border into Syria. Now, some of these trucks had covers over it, but you could clearly see there was some form of missile launch cylindrical tubes that were the size of missiles. There were other trucks, uh, tanker trucks, and uh, I can't read Aramaic, but skull and crossbones, that's international language. We all know what that means. And so all this stuff, convoy after convoy, goes into Syria. We finally invade Iraq, and guess what we don't find? Weapons of mass destruction. But guess what entails right after this? Syria begins building a reactor to make nuclear weapons, which Israel bombed. We see a civil war start in Syria, and what does he start unleashing on his own people? But chemical weapons, and guess where they came from? Iraq. Now, wh why isn't this released to the public? I, I, I don't know. But after I retired for three or four years, if something happened, I still had some friends who were active duty. I could pick up the phone call, tell me what's really going on, because... Uh, anybody with, with some decent clearances in the military, you know what the truth is. And, and so why did I share this whole story? Because I keep uh, receiving these video, uh, TikTok, YouTube, you know, bit shoot, all these things from these people who are farmers or housewives. And I don't mean this in a demeaning, uh, but they're claiming that they've got PSYOP Intel connections and they start detailing a plan of exactly what's going to happen. That you know, tonight at nine o'clock, a bomb's going to drop and black out, and communications black out. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm, who are these people? There, there's no military connections. I've even heard it from a few pastors. Uh, you know, so it's it's part of that false prophetic voice. And so, and, and I'm getting these videos to say it's going to happen tonight at nine o'clock, but they posted a week ago, ten days ago, two weeks ago. Who are these people? And why do they keep making these videos? They've got no idea what they're talking about. They've never been connected. Listen, look, if you meet someone and they tell you in the first sentence of their greeting to you that they're a Navy SEAL, they're not a Navy SEAL. I worked in this field for 22 years. People are involved in intel. Don't meet a pastor after a sermon and say, oh, by the way, I'm an intel. Here's some great information you probably have never heard before. Listen, we signed document after document of swearing to secrecy that we can't release state secrets. I'm still bound by this, even though I've been retired for a number of years. So I, I'm not sure what all this is, except one thing, white noise. It's a distraction. It's keeping you from hearing the true voice of God. Please turn the videos off. Turn the conspiracy stuff off. I don't truly know right now where this is going next Wednesday. But as I said, when I started this, one of two things is going to happen the following Friday. I'm going to repent for not listening to that prophetic voice, or I'm going to repent for listening to that prophetic voice. Either way, we're going to have to do some serious soul searching in the coming days because things aren't right. We've got to disconnect from the media. It's being controlled. Our First Amendment rights are being squelched right now, and that's just the beginning. Mishpocha, it's time for us to get on our knees and seek the face of God. May you hear his voice clearly in this hour. May you be obedient to what he says and may his glory be revealed in your life. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.